Yepper. All right. Hey, guys. What's up? Zooch here. Exciting news. It's the Amazing Race Tournament today. Hope you guys are excited, as I am. Um, I need to probably get the uh, chat going. Um, for those of you who don't know what The Amazing Race is, The Amazing Race is a format of Duelist that I came up with as sort of an alternate way to play. Instead of trying to beat your opponent senseless to death with your minions in general, uh, you more peacefully try to resolve your differences by running around the board uh, with the goal being whoever's general reaches each corner first wins. Uh, so you're going to have to get your general to all four corners of the map before the opponent does. That's how you get victory. Uh, there are some other rules that I will uh, detail in just a second, but if you want to read up on the race rules, I'm including them in the chat. Just type in exclamation point race, and you can uh, check out the Battlefly client with all the rules there. A couple important notes, and we'll, I'm sure we'll go over this um, my my esteemed co-host Garzig and myself will bring this up later in the cast. What's up, everyone? Um, but you can win a couple different ways. Uh, while you can't attack your opponent with your genuine general or your minions, you can win via damage if you do so incidentally. So cards like uh, I don't know Phoenix firing your opponent's face or Flame Blood Warlock or stuff like Dark Seed are all alternate avenues to victory. Um, and what about uh, Blast and Frenzy? Yeah, get a lot of comments about Blast and Frenzy. Mm -hmm. As long as you're not directly attacking the opponent, you're good to go. <laughs> Chat nice. inception. So if you've got your Pyromancer set up and you are just happen to be shooting the minion behind them and yeah. they're in the way, it's all good. Shouldn't have gotten in the way. It's like the old Simpsons episode where he's just <laughs> swinging his arms. Uh, people of my generation will get that probably. Um, and the only other real uh, corner case that I think might be an interesting alternate strategy is battle pets. So um, I thought long and hard about whether battle pets would be allowed because, well, you can't really control them. So they might attack the opponent by accident. Then what would you do? And so mm -hmm. figured, hey, why not just let battle pets be allowed and see what happens? Who knows? Um, so Skarzik, what is your if you had to play in this tournament? What would you play? Um, if I personally <laughs> was going to play, although I think that Magmar is hilarious, I think that I would personally go for Lionar. I think that they probably have, like... I'm, I'm sort of like a toolbox utility-focused player where I want a bunch of different options. I think that's what Lionar brings to the table, where they've got the Provoke to lock you down, they've got the Beam Shock, <laughs> and then they have a little bit of movement options with the Magnetize. To kind of shake things up with Azurite Lion, I really like the diversity that mm. they'll be able to bring to the format. Yeah, I found when when I was testing this format on my stream the past couple nights, Beam Shock is a super powerful tool because you just like if the point of the whole game is to run around the map, spending zero mana to like stop your opponent <laughs> for a whole turn is incredible. Um, I know a lot of people thought Vanar would be really good going in because of cards like Gravity Well. Uh, magnetize avalanche. Um, oh, mesmerize. Mesmerize. That's what right. I meant. Mesmerize. Oh my god, that that card that doesn't see play. <laughs> yeah. But hey, man, just moving your opponent one space yeah. away. <laughs> that that bot. That's one more turn that yeah. they need to move into the corner. Um. Let's see what else. So, Song High, I think is a pretty popular faction just from people's initials reaction. You've got uh, Mist Walking. You've, mm -hmm. you've... I think that because they because Miss Walking is one of the only general movement options that at one point in time was actually built into their kit to see a lot of play actually synergize with their game plan. I think that that's the what makes the faction pop into people's heads first and yeah. foremost. So what do you do? You think uh, you think Magmar or Abyssian or Vitruvian have any game? I mean, I have my personal feelings. I want to see what you think, though. Um, I think that I think that Magmar is actually going to have a lot of good matchups here if people do choose to bring it. I think that they're pretty sleeper just with Flash Reincarnation and being able to bring out some fatter bodies than normal and just uh, body block, right? Yeah. That's what Magmar is really good at. Yeah. I uh, if, if you guys want to watch um, some videos of all the factions in action, I've got a, a video up on my YouTube page about it. Magmar 
surprisingly, is actually probably the winningest faction that I have. Because <laughs> you just plop down Solothar Elders and Pandoras, and all of a sudden, you, like, slow and steady wins the race. You don't have any, like, good movement options, but your opponent can't get through, like, 20 six sixes, right? Right, and everybody has <coughs> like Tracer, and if you the game lasts long enough for you to draw them, that's usually enough. Yeah. Um, Vitruvian, we've got Time Maelstrom is a good one. I know that uh, a couple people have talked about Spine Cleaver um, and, like, Repulsor Beasting the totem into a corner that your opponent hasn't visited yet. <laughs> that's brutal. Yeah, or just Sand Trap Repulsor Beast, like, sort of a... Like, unfair, if you don't have an answer to this in your deck, you lose. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, Abyssian, I know, doesn't seem like it has a whole lot of game, but it, I think it actually does because of the uh, um, the alternate strategy, which is, like, the burn plan. So with right. Abyssian, you've got Dark Seed, you've got Void Pulse. You can get pretty aggressive with that deck. I think, too, if, um, if you're against a matchup like Vitruvian then you'll be able to sacrifice your own units to get rid of some of those totems or if something gets sand trapped. Yep. Uh, the problem, I think, is that outside of that burn strategy, Abyssian might be a bit slow Yeah. because they need to get set up, right? Because if you can get your Wraithling engine going with a Shadow Dancer and a Blood Moon Priestess, then maybe all those Wraithlings can just keep your opponent bottled up in the corner. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen Blood Moon Priestess just run away with the game like, if you don't have a way to remove it, really, you can't really get into the corner at all. Um, that is true. Anyway, all right, why don't we jump into our first tournament, okay? Our first match of the tournament, I guess. Uh, this is going to be uh, Casero versus Reina Sama. Here we go. And why nice. don't we play? All right. Yeah, let's get into it. Do we know who they're playing? Uh, so we've got Reina Sama as Vanar. And we've got Casero as... Oh, let me share screen with you, I guess. Hold on. You can't see anything, can you? <laughs> All right. And we've got um, Casero as Songhai, as Kalios. There we go. All right. So we've got... Uh, I think that going first is pretty good for the Amazing Race, for sure, because you can take that first corner, right? And then... Being basically being a turn up on your opponent in this format is really huge. You yeah. aren't vying for the center tiles as much, but being able to take that first move is not something that the design of the game accounted for, right, when it was being built. So this I mean, <laughs> format brings out some different aspects for sure. Yeah. I mean it is a race, right? <laughs> oh absolutely. Ooh. Oh, and this is a great little play. So one of the things that you're going to see throughout this tournament is blocking your opponent from getting to the corner. And it looks like Reynasama used Heart Sister plus Snow Chaser to provide a nice little roadblock here. All right. So if you're Casero here, what do you do? Do you just do you ghost links? Uh, it looks like he's ghost links linksing this out of the way. What do you think that's, of that? That's probably a really good play because that Snow Chaser being an infiltrate range, especially so early. It's just going to constantly poke at whatever he's going to try to summon to get something going, and it's just going to keep him gummed up on his side of the board, especially. It works that way even in regular constructed. What Did you like that more than uh, Repulsor Beast? Because he got kind of lucky to just snipe the Snow Chaser with his 1-1 one, one Ether Master. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he really threw up the Hail Mary there. <laughs> uh, it's just that I think that he wanted to preserve the uh, Repulsor Beast perhaps for something a bit bigger, a bit more threatening, because it's like the Snow Chaser is really annoying and <coughs> threatened via the value that it could possibly generate. But Repulsor Beast, I think, is a more um, be-all, end-all answer to things that you couldn't deal with otherwise. So I think preserving that might be a bit smart for this format. Ooh, Ooh. God, Blazing Spine. <laughs> oh, he, needs, he needs to replace in a Phoenix Fire to keep his momentum going. <laughs> Look at this. He's trapped him in the corner. <laughs> and here we go. Vanar's got a way to bottle you up, and they're also burning you down. Uh, now, what do you think about him putting the Blazing Spine beneath the general? It seems like he might have been better off just putting it, just blocking this whole path. Although, with Tracer, it looks like that's sort of a moot point, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I guess that by putting it in the corner like that, he forced... Um, he forced him to attack the Hearth Sister, 
right, oh, before he yeah. could play the silhouette tracer. So it costs him two spaces of movement, essentially, and he takes a bit more damage. So That's a really good point. That's a good point. All right. So we've got uh, Faye right here, Reina-sama, with uh, what looks like a hailstone prison, a mesmerize, and a spell jammer, and an altered beast. I've never seen that card actually played. What, what do you think is the play here? Um, altered beast would be pretty interesting because you could actually transform the uh, that blazing spine and then get it to start moving out of the corner. If he gets like maybe a dex or something, he can get a few more points of damage and for free. Oh, but he's <coughs> Hmm. I guess he did that so that, uh, you know, the silhouette tracer couldn't move in front of him and block his path, right? It's a nice preemptive Right, because he is to... trying to keep up the momentum here. Yeah. He's been, because Rain Sam has been keeping him, you know, just messing with him right on his side of the board, but he hasn't gotten anything really going uh, by getting towards the other side of the map, because right now both both players are pretty even. He plays the spell jammer behind him, I guess, to make sure it doesn't attack the it doesn't get attacked by the battle pet. And here we see Casero with a couple cool options, including Keshrai Fanblade. That's a great that's a great I play. I think that that's a really great tech card for sure because you want to slow down what your opponent is doing and Keshrai Fanblade. I think in a format like this where it's more transparent what your opponent's going to be doing and the kinds of spells that they're going to be running then it's best to just plop that down whenever. Because during normal constructed play, it's kind of difficult to gauge when you should play it. But again, in a format like this, playing it pretty much at any time is going to gum up your opponent in one way or another. <laughs> Look at the spells in this <laughs> What a blowout. Oh, man. Oh, well, this is good. Bandaid, which... <laughs> Be told, I didn't even think about is going to be absolutely enormous here. Oh man, this is great. Now, I think you still want to hang on to that avalanche, though. He doesn't have any other options for his turn. Uh, chromatic cold, take out the spell jammer, try to deny his opponent some cards, but he's also playing like spell not jammer. either. Yeah, <laughs> and because he has the this is actually really smart too, since he has the Kashrai behind him, the mesmerize won't affect him either. Yeah, yeah. I guess he elects to bounce Hailstone. So uh, one thing I'll mention here, I really like Hailstone and Vanar because you can end up bouncing your own uh, Silhouette Tracers, which almost always tends to be a major blowout. Yeah, that is that is a really enormous, if he can get it to go off, but he's got his own minion blocking, so what's probably going to be the play is just blinking the Kashrai into range. Yeah. And then uh, taking that out <coughs> because Faye is starting to run low on cards here. Well, a little bit. And so you want to try to deny your opponent as much as you can, especially a song high since they have a bit more natural card draw built into them, right? Yeah. Well, okay. And, and we can't forget the fact that uh, we want to be stopping our opponent. So, I mean, what do you do? Do you, you, do you play something right in front of the opponent or do you go up near the top or... Like, where are you going to put your minions here, right? Do you go on the offensive? He could even, yeah, he could even leave this Kashrai Fanblade in place or move it down and just start to wall because he has control of the center now. Yeah. And this will this will uh, give Rain Sama, you know, plus one or plus two turns, right, where he can't get around that, that center. And here we're seeing, <laughs> again, where Faye sort of is losing momentum, where she hasn't gotten a chance to really move on to the opponent's side of the board if she can uh, replace aggressively here and get some silhouette tracers she can definitely make up this deficit especially since we can see the avalanche is waiting and getting ready to be drawn oh my here. gosh so things are about to get really hilarious i'm gonna and he can mesmerize one of these two guys into into avalanche range which is the best part <laughs> casero might be in danger of dying here i mean this is a lot of damage that uh reina sama could could potentially deal He's got eight with the avalanche. Yeah, he'll be stunned too, yeah, because he's going to be stunned with the avalanche, and then he'll be eating warbirds at the same time. That's again probably going to be. I wonder if he's running three copies of okay. avalanche. It's a pretty good card if your opponent, if you know at some point in the game, yeah, your opponent's right. going to make their way onto your side of the board. Seems pretty good. So then you can get like the stun lock, <coughs> or if he gets like an outswing lore master, he can just do 
like perma stun lock here for like three or four turns. Yeah. Or if he has, if he's running icy, that would be another huge blowout to just keep him locked down and deny that it was. Because he hasn't gotten into that last that corner just yet because he had to move the spell jammer with his ghost links. So uh, both players are still technically tied, and now with the stun coming down, uh, Rain Sama can move into range next turn, and the Blazing Spine isn't blocking him either. Okay. So all in all, really solid. All right, so we've got Casera here. Stunned, can't quite make it to the corner. He could Silhouette Tracer in there, but it almost seems that like... Seems you That's want. like really lo low value right? to use your silhouette tracer just on one. Does he? I, he needs to fish for um, mist walking here. I think. I really want him to lore master back a uh, an avalanche and just threaten that. <laughs> Be like, go ahead, <laughs> try to get to your side of the board. One thing that to would be that would be nonsense. One thing to think about here is that if he Repulsor Beasts one of these Blazing Spines into uh, Reina Sama's corner, then it's going to be really hard for Reina Sama to, to get into that corner because they'll have this like friendly minion there that can't... Oh, he's doing it! He blinks the Saber Spine so that he can get the Repulsor uh, Beast in range. Blah. <laughs> he didn't put it in the corner. It makes me sad. Mm. <laughs> Okay, so he doesn't deny the corner, but what he did do is because he moved it down, once Rain Sama is in the corner, he has to step out, down, and then back in. So he's still sort of buying a turn, Yeah. but you're right, it's not as good value as if he had the Blazing Spine directly in the corner. Yeah, it would demand a, uh, like, a dispel. A sister or something, or yeah. to dispel his own unit, absolutely. So missing out on a bit of probably completely ridiculous value there but oh wow no never mind look at this he's got aspect to the mountain he could have just like <laughs> gotten it right out of the way <laughs> that that's probably what he was anticipating then to not put it in the corner and this just like just slow <coughs> down just one more turn two more turns where he's got to step out and then back in well it looks like he can move these guys out of the way if he just if he, oh, he can mesmerize, he can, um, like, cryogenesis, and then he can avalanche. Uh, I, I feel like I would almost keep the chromatic cold, because you're at the point where, if you're avalanching this turn, you're getting your opponent within a couple, uh, a couple, uh, you know, shots of Warbird to just kill them. Yeah, that's true, because, like, he's, at least he's able to mesmerize the Repulsor Beast and, and get the full two movement squares on his turn, but as it stands right now, it looks like it might go to uh, Casero if he can move into that corner and then Silhouette Tracer. <laughs> well, he's gonna... he, he needs to get, he does need to get mist walking. Yeah. I, we, we aren't absolutely sure if he has it, but as Song, I would just, oh, he, rely on that. he got it. So yeah, so there's the mist walking. I think this is game right Alcuin, here. Alcuin into another mist walking, silhouette tracer, and then that would be oh, the man. corner. <laughs> that was a great play. <laughs> he was stunned. That was awesome. Things really did come down to the wire. He's still stunned. He's bringing those chunks of ice along with him. <laughs> format yeah this format's so much fun all right while i set up uh while i set up this next match anything cool that you didn't see that you want to see um, <coughs> hang on i think i'm frozen here 